Our next speaker was a pioneer at the university, or sorry, Kansas State University as they were on their journey to become a strengths-based campus. She laid the foundation for creating an engaged and vibrant campus for more than 25,000 students each year. And so she works to create change for individuals and teams um, using strengths, engagement, and well-being. Her full story can be found in the Clifton Strengths for Students book at the very front. So please join me in giving a very warm welcome to Kristen O'Shea. Good morning. I'm glad you get a little treat while I talk this morning. <laughs> I had an amazing undergraduate experience where strengths, well-being, and engagement went hand in hand. I'm excited to be here this morning to share with you a little bit what that was like for me and where it's taken me. Watch with me as we see what's, what it's like on Kansas State University's campus. magic behind strengths at Kansas State University has really been driven by our student energy taking their strengths and then applying their strengths to their living learning communities, student organizations, student government, and so then it's really uh, impacted and, and touched all departments across the campus. So we reach 900 uh, first semester freshmen every fall semester and then a lot of our students started to say, hey, out of everything that we did throughout the course of the semester, strengths matter. Strengths gave me the power and the efficacy to see myself exercise leadership in powerful ways. They start to make the connection to say, I can be transformational in the lives of others through individual consideration. I can be transformational uh, through my journey at Kansas State University just by taking time out and sitting down with one of my peers and having a conversation uh, at the coffee shop and asking them about their life, asking them about their strengths journey, and how they're exercising leadership to make K-State a better community. The theoretical transformational piece is, is so powerful for our students because we live in a world that's just full of transactions. You pay your uh, tuition and fees, uh, we put you into classes, sometimes classes that are probably way too large, but yet strengths has an opportunity for students to see their own individual uh, spirit show up amongst others on our campus environment, so it's, it's, it's powerful. When we decided to go campus-wide, we needed to engage multiple voices across multiple factions of the, uh, of the institution. Campus leaders started to say, I want strengths training in my department. I want strengths training in my college, in my office. And so we went out and we fulfilled the need. But in fulfilling the need, we also energized a lot of people across campus from a lot of different factions uh, who were excited about strengths. So when people started to see that strengths wasn't something else, but more or less something that they could integrate in the work that they were already doing, and it, it was affirming, and it felt good, people were all on board. So then it was kind of uh, just our university community saying, let's schedule times for our champions to meet, and we're just constantly giving updates and sharing stories as to how strengths is being significant in the lives of our students, our faculty, and uh, staff, and uh, alumni. At age 17, I created the ultimate college plan. I visited seven universities and looked at a variety of different majors, outlined what classes I would take with the different majors, and then attempted to look at how I could integrate different minors within those different majors. I loved the planning and the details. But I didn't think this was a good thing, mainly because it was very different than the rest of my peers. So the summer before I headed off to K-State, I decided I needed to be more go with flow, more laid back. <laughs> this is what college planning looked like for me. <laughs> Let's just say my parents were happy when I chose anywhere at all. <laughs> that fall, when I got to campus and my leadership studies program, <laughs> surprise. Um, <laughs> 
I took my Clifton Strengths for students, and I'll never forget the feeling I had when I read my results. Discipline, planning, details, creating order, harmony, finding common ground with a wide variety of topics and a wide variety of people, individualization, being seen as unique and seeing others as unique, responsibility, being all in with my commitments and being very dependable, deliberative, being an intentional decision maker, including on where to go to college. <laughs> um, so this is me, uh, no more go with the flow. It also pretty much said, you are uniquely good at controlling things. <laughs> oh wait, maybe that was my husband. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can see him nodding his head from anywhere in the audience right now. But don't worry, I made sure we had complimentary strengths before we got married. I was so intrigued by my top five that I set up an appointment with my professor, Mike Finnegan, who you all just met in the video, to discuss my results. We talked about how my strengths were unique and something that only I could bring to the table. They weren't something to be stifled. Right away, I could tell Mike cared about my growth and development. He even sent me home with an extra Clifton Strengths for Students book so someone in my family could take the assessment and discuss the results with me. Can you imagine an undergraduate experience where every roommate you had, you knew their top five strengths, and you were able to have meaningful conversations about how that impacted their living styles and what they cared about? Where you could say to your roommate, don't worry about it, I know you're just using your focus. Or, I'm having an empathy overload, can we talk? <laughs> can you imagine having your entire sorority's team strengths map <laughs> All 182 members, 82 of whom you live under the same roof with, so very helpful. <laughs> and when it came time for officer transitions, you were able to talk about your team's goals and how you were going to leverage each officer's strengths to reach those goals. So at one point in time, my team's goals was to create um, increase well-being and enthusiasm of the chapter, as well as increase the standards and procedures. All of these pictures are authentic from the actual experience. At K-State, we have student presidential debates, and rather than having a regular presidential debate, we did one focused on strengths, where each candidate could talk about what they had to bring to the table and how their running mates um, could leverage each other's partnerships. And at K-State, each student has the opportunity to speak with a career advisor and talk about how they can learn how to speak about their talents, whether they're interviewing for a student organization, an internship, or a job. This is Paige. Paige is a successful young woman with command in her top five strengths. As a younger member of the sorority, Paige was self-conscious of her command. We had a conversation about how people with different strengths and values could perceive her and also times when it had been very beneficial in group settings. It just so happens my empathy and harmony talents really appreciated her command and vice versa, and so we roomed together one semester and we're still friends today. Some of my favorite conversations around strengths have been with friends in regard to social well-being and relationships. Professor Mike, who I met with as a freshman, became one of my biggest advisors and mentors and the relationship was life-changing. He cared about me as a person, he challenged me, and he provided opportunities for growth in my areas of greatest potential. Mike has spoken at various Gallup sessions, and every time he brings students or former students with him. In fact, at K-State, the Strengths Charge is led by students because the campus greatly values student-led initiatives and they work. Mike wasn't the only advisor and professor and faculty and staff at K-State who used my strengths to customize my growth. It also provided an extra boost in mentorship with my professor and sorority advisor, Tamara, my career advisor, Dana, and my campus manager for campus job and an orientation and enrollment, and many others. I truly had an incredible environment at K-State where there are very intentional and integrated strengths touch points throughout my time on campus. There are a thousand campuses that
that are providing this experience for their students, and it's life-changing. Watch with me as it goes far beyond an assessment on campus. I think there's an amazing energy when people have that knowledge about themselves, and I think especially on a campus like K-State that is all about family, and it's all about coming together and working together. When you have people that are that aware of their personal strengths, but also that are that aware and appreciative of other people's strengths, and you combine that with that feeling of coming together that just is on this campus, it's, it's wonderful, and there's such an appreciation for everybody's unique talents. Every student goes through this when they are transitioning from high school to college, that they don't know what uh, if their major is right, if what they're doing is correct, what can, what can go wrong and everything, and generally people tend to focus on their weaknesses, but I would rather say you need to focus, give more energy, spend more energy on focusing on your strengths rather than thinking about your weaknesses, because your strengths are something that will remain with you all your life. So you need to build them up, you need to understand them, and you need to work well with them. When I saw the Clifton Strengths Finder, it was just really interesting because it went a little bit more in depth than a lot of other systems do. So when I found out about it, I was just like, wow, this is exactly like what I'm like. And so it was just exciting to read about and put into action. Helped me be more aware of things. And so it, it helped me be aware both of my weaknesses, because um, I could kind of put a name to it and be like, oh, this is what I'm doing, and this is why I'm doing it. And the same thing with my strengths and recognizing them and being able to play into them in more situations. I was actually a walk-up warm-up counselor over this past summer, um, and so I really saw um, how my strengths came into play um, through like interacting and helping new students come to K-State. Uh, so I really saw that aspect of uh, talking to people, uh, being positive, and um, really learning how to grow with individuals that are coming to K-State and like show them that this is a positive and encouraging environment that all students can learn from. Engage me to dive deeper into my classes and connections with professors and other students around me and it's just really encouraged me to do that and really recognize other people's strengths as well as my own. As I develop it myself professionally, I think it's important to know uh, what are you good at, what can you market yourself uh, as, as, as being strong in and how can you utilize that uh, to make yourself the best employee, the best citizen, the best student, uh, the best husband, you know, I think the list goes on and on. It's amazing. Fast forward to present day, I'm 26 years old, I've worked full-time for four years with two different organizations. I've conducted a variety of different um, strengths, well-being, and engagement workshops with for-profit, non-profit, government, and faith-based organizations. I wish I could say I found organizations that are as thriving and engaged as K-State, but I haven't. I expected to find supervisors and mentors who cared about my growth challenged me and provided as many opportunities as my advisors on campus. While I found some, I didn't expect it to be so rare or challenging. The experience I had with my advisor, Mike, is the expectation I had in the workplace for my supervisors and managers. I expected the organizations I did strengths workshops with to learn how to integrate the language and application into the work that they were already doing. However, it seemed a little bit more like the strengths event was over here, and people learned a lot about themselves. And then when it was over, people went back to work, which was over here, and the two didn't integrate. I expected for the growth of employees to be holistic. However, it seemed a little bit more like growth for yourself is something that happens outside of eight to five or on the weekends and growth for your role and the company you're in is a perk that you may have the opportunity to focus on one to two days a year. I've also learned just how much change within a company can impact employee engagement, and then firsthand how that can affect someone's well-being. And when that happens, pretty soon strengths don't look or feel like strengths anymore. Too often, organizations create strengths events to cover up engagement pain, and it doesn't work. As coaches, we're called to be authentic, like Professor Mike was. As leaders, we're called to care about and ask questions about each other's engagement and well-being. That's the kind of place I want to work in. An organization focused on creating a thriving, engaged culture 
using a Clifton Strengths lens to do so. If I can experience that at a large university, we should be able to expect that anywhere. Yes. <laughs> Today, I'm attempting to change lives the way Professor Mike changed mine. I'm consulting and helping organizations care and invest in each other's well-being and engagement using Clifton Strengths as the life-changing way to do so. I strongly believe that an organization's great biggest asset is its people, and people's greatest asset are their strengths. We must leverage them. I'm coming, I'm coming to the workplace um, along with others with high expectations, and I'm not alone. A thousand other campuses are graduating students and have an alumni who are coming into the workplace with very different expectations. We're coming with a readiness to contribute in big ways. We want to be valued, challenged, coached. We want managers who care about our growth and development. If all of us in this room can come together and care as much as Professor Mike cared, and invest in our organization's greatest asset, people, imagine the impact we could create. Now that's the kind of world I want to live and work in. Thank you.